All right, I want to talk about numbers and I want to talk about how we format numbers. When I type a number into my computer, I'm going to type in um, um, 12,345.3452. Let's say I just type that number in. Notice I didn't put dollar symbols, I didn't put commas. I don't add, usually when I type a number, I don't add any extra foo-foo, any extra ornamentation. We just type numbers in directly. I'm going to press enter, and it entered that number into cell B3. Now, numbers are special to, um, to uh, Excel. Uh, numbers are stored uh, differently than um, non-numbers, um, or what we sometimes call uh, alphanumeric data. For example, if I have my name, that's stored as J-I-M. Sometimes we call something a number and it's really not a number. Like, for example, an employee number would be, you know, like um, H-J-3-4-1-1. And that's really not a number. We don't use it in calculations. We're never going to want to find what is the average employee number. Another number that's not really a number, or at least we wouldn't put it in Excel and use it like a number, is like a phone number. You would never need to know what is the average phone number of everybody in my company, all my employees, or, or let me add up 15 phone numbers of my customers. We would never need an average phone number. So even though we called it a number, it's really just a label. And that's what we call these things like the word Jim or um, you know other descriptors we might put, you know, like a city name like New York. If we're trying to put some numbers uh, about New York, like the population of New York, we might have to put the word New York into our spreadsheet. But it's a label, not a number. This is a label, not a number. Numbers, uh, for example, in this case, what does this mean? It's not just stored as a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a, a, a period, a 3, a 4, a 5. In fact, Excel knows this because I didn't put, uh, I didn't, it knows it's a number because I didn't put other things around it, like other letters and uh, other ornamentation. So it knows that this is a number, and that means that it's 5 ones, 4 tens, three one hundreds, uh, two, one th uh, two one thousands, and one ten thousands. Uh, it knows that, so it can, it can do calculations with numbers. You can never do calculations with these things down here, but numbers you can. So one of the important things to know about numbers is, first of all, to get them into your spreadsheet, just type them in without all the extra ornamentation. You can now in Excel use commas, and you can even type in dollar symbols and percent symbols, but for the most part, you can leave those off. And what we do is come back later and we format the numbers to look a certain way. Now, one thing that you might note is this is a number, but dates are also considered numbers. So if I said, uh, for example, it, it might be 6 slash 1 slash 16, that's a date, but that's also a number. That's also stored as a numeric value. Uh, it, in, in this case over here, we had five ones four tens, three one hundreds, and so forth. In this case, we have 2016 uh, uh, years, and then we have one day plus six months, 630 days or 631 days or 29 day months. So you can see it's, it's a number, and it's instead of decimal places and so forth, we have slashes which distinguish the places, but it is a number. So you can actually use uh, dates, for example, in formulas. Let me show you what I mean by, I can type in a date, like let's say I have 4, uh, 14, slash 15, and I've got that number, that, that number, it's a date, but I've got a number here in E3, and I've got a, a number or date, I should say, here in D3. These are both dates, but they're also numbers to Excel. If I said in F3 is equal to uh, this date minus this date, that tells me it's been 414 days between these two dates. So you can actually use dates as formulas as well. Or I should say you can use dates uh, in a formula. So dates are also numbers. All right, so when we talk about numbers, though, sometimes it is helpful to uh, format them to look a certain way. Uh, one of the ways we can do this, for example, is we can tell it the number of decimal places we want to display. Now, I have two buttons here, uh, the decrease decimal and the increase decimal. And um, if I click on the number or the numbers, if I had a bunch of numbers, I could highlight them all. 
and then I could come up here and apply the formatting to it. So I'm going to increase uh, my decimal places. And you see that I'm just increasing. It's not really changing the value of the number, right? Adding a bunch of zeros to the end is not changing the value of the number. Um, I'm just d changing the way that number is displayed. And so I'm just taking, uh, increasing or decreasing decimal places. Now watch this though. If I get rid of that zero at the end, I'm decreasing my decimals here. Now what's going to happen if I get rid of this too? Will it change the number? Well, it doesn't really change the number that's stored here in Excel. Uh, if you notice up here on the formula bar, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it still has uh, one, one, 12,345 point three, four, five, two, the two is still there, but it's just displaying the five. Uh, it's just not displaying the two, I should say. And if I continue to decrease, it's going to be interesting here because this is going to go to 0.35 because it's going to round that up. So I'm going to decrease the decimal place and see now it's one, uh, uh, 12,345.35, but really it's 0.3452. It just displays rounded up. So it will round up and I can get rid of all the decimal places if I want to. So that's how we increase or decrease decimal places, but it doesn't change the value that's in the cell. Formatting never changes the value. Well, there is one exception and I'll talk about that later, but formatting seldom changes the value that's actually stored in the cell. Okay, another way we might want to do this is it's kind of hard because you can't see that it's 12,345. Usually we put commas in here and they do have uh, up here a number format called comma style. And if I click on that, it'll change this to where it'll put a comma in there. So I'll just click on comma style and notice it now has uh, a comma in there. I, I wish they would just call that normal standard numbers because uh, let's say I just had the number 345. Um, I'll type that in here. If I if I format that for comma style, it doesn't make sense. There's no commas in there because it's not big enough. But if I do make it big enough, um, you know, when I do press enter, it will have commas in there. Does that make sense? So um, and we can decrease the number of decimal places we want that and so forth. So that's comma style. Now something you might use a lot of would be um, dollars, dollars and cents. So they also have up here uh, in the format area here for numbers, uh, dollars. Um, they call it accounting number format. Um, so let's say I, I wanted to take this and, it, and, and I click on this. It adds a dollar symbol in here and uh, it also puts two decimal places in here. I can decrease the decimal place if I want to, but it's going to generally assume that I want two decimal places when I format it for dollar or uh, currency. See why I clicked on that again? Let me undo that. I, control Z, I just undid that. Um, it's got no, it's got three decimal places here, but when I click on tele, on a telecomputer to do the accounting number format, it'll change it to two decimal places. All right, so by default, it gives you two decimal places because you want dollars and cents, and that's the cents part, and it puts the dollar symbol in. Um, one thing that's a little confusing sometimes is the um, percent. So let's say I have the number um, 45, okay, and I've got that typed into a cell. If I press percent, it changed to 4,500 percent. If I wanted 45 percent, uh, I would need to type in 0 0.45, 0 0.45, and then I could change that to a percentage. Basically, when you take a percent, you multiply it by 100. Um, you can get the same thing by taking um, 0.45 and multiplying it by 100. But this shows that it's a percentage and you can actually, you, that will actually compute as 0.45 in a formula. So if I wanted 45% of, um, let's say um, 500, I could type in 500 here and I could say this is equal to that times 45 and it would be 225, which is 45% of 500. I don't know if you know all about the math or not, but you can multiply 500 by 0.45. That's the way percentage works, uh, and you get the same thing. So that's a, a quick look at some of the formatting that's right in here. Now, we've got lots of other formatting we can do. For example, with dates, we can come in here to this date, and we could change to different date formats. I can come up here to this number formatting section here, and I can click on this, and I've got lots of things that I can choose from. Uh, for example, there's short date and long date. Let's see. The short date is what I have in there. Let's change the long date and see what it does. So it changed that date. 
to Wednesday, June 1st, 2016. Now, the words Wednesday and June and so forth are not stored in the spreadsheet here. Instead, the number is still 6 slash 1 slash 2016. The value here is, is 6 1 2016. It's just that it displays formatted as Wednesday, June 1st, 2016. We have lots of different date formats we can choose from. Uh, we come down here at the bottom and you can see more number formats and there's a bazillion different formats that you can choose from. I'm going to move this up so you can see it a little better. Uh, look at all these different date formats. For example, um, let's just take this one. Well, let me go down a little bit. I'll scroll down. Let's take this one. It doesn't. Ha this one has Wednesday which has the day of the week but this has just March 14th. So. Of course, it's just showing you it's March 14th. It's not what's actually displayed in the cell. It's June 1st, but it's showing you that that's how that would be displayed. Let's click OK, and you can see it's June 1st, 2016. So you have lots of different um, formats for, for dates and dates and times. So uh, those are all up here under more number, number formats, and you would choose date format. Um, so while we're while we're talking about different formats we also have lots of different formats for numbers for example here I can go into different counting formats if I want to more number formats and I can choose accounting and I can specify uh, how the, 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 the symbol to be displayed or which symbol in this case like if I want the British pound I can find that down here the number of decimal places for this um, um, I also got other currency they call it and look at different ways I can display like negative numbers for example do I want a negative number to display in red do I want a lot of accountants like to put negative numbers in parentheses um, and so if you do um, you would choose this for the, the, the way you would format negative numbers um, and again you have symbols and the number of decimal places you want to put as well so you have lots of different formats you can have for numbers uh, a little later, I'll talk about how you can do something called conditional formatting. You can you can format numbers. For example, if a number is greater than 100, you might want it to be red. Or if a number is uh, greater than zero. For example, let's say you had some customers and you wanted um, to highlight all of the ones in red. You wanted the text to be red for all of those that are. Uh, owe something their outstanding balance they have an outstanding balance a balance greater than zero there's a way you can do conditional formatting and that's up here you might want to take a look at that conditional formatting but we'll take a look at that a little bit later I wanted to take a uh, talk about one more th one thing you'll see sometimes is if you change the width of a column watch me change this column width if I change the width of this column look what happens to this number right here okay what's happening is the number uh, is too large to fit in that column with that column width and so it only displays the pound symbol because it can't change the value of the number to make it fit um, so it's got to do something and so that's what it does